Well, welcome this evening. Good to see you all. Hallelujah. Yes. Before we start, I just want to pray. Father, I thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you are an awesome God. Lord, you're the great I am. You are everything to us. And Lord, tonight as we, Lord, open your word, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit, Father, will breathe life onto these words. Lord, that it will not just be man's ideas, but Lord, that comes straight out of your word, Lord God, and that will be your words. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we acknowledge that your Holy Spirit is here with us tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, your word says, Lord God, where two or three are gathered, some even in the midst of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, your word says that you're the same yesterday, today, mm -hmm. and forever. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we thank you that Jesus is the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Amen. 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 <laughs> I want to read a passage of scripture out of Luke chapter 8. And I want to read from verse 43 to 48. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Interesting. Interesting passage of scripture. Interesting lady without a name. I want to look at two ladies without names. They obviously had names, but names aren't mentioned in the Bible. This lady said that she had been subject to bleeding for 12 years and that nobody could heal her. If we look at because this passage of scripture from different people have is, is in three of the gospels. It's in Mark, Matthew, and Luke. And all together they give a little bit more understanding. This uh, lady had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. I can't even imagine 12 years <coughs> bleeding for 12 years what she would have even looked like. She would have to have been skin and bones, wouldn't she? Yeah. 12 years. Bleeding. Uh, she had been to, she had used all her money going from doctors to doctor and still no healing. In those days, for somebody to be having a discharge or bleeding, meant that they uh, were ceremonially unclean. Yes. And so therefore she would have, under the law, have to notify the people around her that she was unclean. So she would have to say unclean. So that means she couldn't have been living with anybody because of this, her uncleanness. That means she, would have, she wouldn't only be bleeding, but she would be lonely she would be ostracized, she would be away from everybody, she wouldn't be living with her family. She would be just like that. Embarrassed, lonely, alone, unlovable, on the outer. How would she be? 
In fact, if somebody touched a person like that, they would be unclean. They would have to get washed. They would have to be they would have to be checked out and have to go to the priest to get checked out. Just a touch. But she, the Bible says, it says that she she believed that if she could only touch the hem of her garment, have the hem of hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. Now, in those days, Jesus was moving around and he was healing all who were healed, oppressed with the devil, or all who, everyone who came to him was healed. And therefore, she would have had confidence. I better turn it off. There's someone out in front of Captain. She believed that if she could just touch him, she would be healed. Just a touch. In fact, she touched Jesus, and Jesus touched her. And under those, in, under the situation, then people would have expected Jesus to become unclean because he touched her. I know he only touched, she only touched him again, but she, but, but she came up to him. At, the, at this particular time when Jesus was, was, was moving through the crowd, a little earlier, the Bible says that a, a nobleman or, or a person in high position by the name Jarius came to him, came to Jesus and asked him if he would come with, if he would come with then to go to his house because his daughter was seriously ill, almost dying. And on the way through, this woman comes up to him. Just a touch. Jesus said, power has come out, out from him. And Jesus said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. I'm going to come back to this passage of scripture uh, a few times. In the previous chapter, we have another woman. This woman, in chapter 7, is Jesus had been invited, I'm assuming he's invited, into a Pharisee's house, and he was there, and a woman came up to him and started crying at his feet and using perfume up to Jesus' feet and washing his feet with perfume. And she was crying. And she was drying his feet with her hair. And the, uh, the Pharisee said, if, if Jesus really knew, if, if he is who he said he was, he would know that this woman was a sinner. And uh, Jesus says to him, he says, when I came in, you didn't wash my hands, you didn't give me anything, but this woman hasn't stopped. And yet he, gave, he said to her in uh, verse 50, he says, while Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, I'm sorry, it's the wrong one. I'm in the wrong, the wrong chapter. Chapter 7. Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sin? <laughs> Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Your faith has saved you, go in peace. Here we have one woman, without a name, that gets saved from her sins to go in peace. And this other woman, who needed healing, Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you, 
going pace. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Salvation and healing at the hands of Jesus Christ. Healing. I was talking to someone during the week, and he was talking about somebody who had an incurable disease, Crohn's disease, <clears throat> supposedly incurable. They can treat it, but they can't heal it. In this day, there were certain types of sickness that was unable to be healed. No healing. There's no remedy for that. But Jesus was able to heal incurable diseases and heal the worst of sin and save the worst of sins. We're here tonight for it's a healing and revival service. We believe that Jesus Christ is able to heal people and to save people. Amen. All people. All people. It's interesting. He was talking. Jesus was talking to this Pharisee. And he said, "He said that uh, suppose there's two people. One owed fifty, or even a large amount of money, and another one owed a small amount of money. And 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 the person who who was who was the money was owed to said he he, he squashed each debt." And he, he said, well, who would be the more grateful? And he said, I suppose the one that had the biggest debt cancelled. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what do you reckon? Yeah. That makes sense to you? Yeah. You know, some, some of us have had great sins needed to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. Some people live a life reasonably okay, and they have hardly any sins to be forgiven. Which person is more grateful? Mm. Some people are not too sure about that. The one with many sins because he knows he's a sinner and the need of power. You know, I did a fair bit of ministry in prisons. And you know, in prison, you find there's not, I never come across one person there that didn't, didn't recognize themselves as a sinner. But yet I have walked the streets around different places. I've had people come to me and say, oh really, I've never sinned. <laughs> I'm a good person. In fact, I've asked some people, I used to have a bit of a question, I say, if, uh, why would you believe you're saved? And I say, of course I'm saved. And I says, why are you saved? Because I'm a good person. And if you ask them, well, that's good. But, and I say, I'm, I'm a good person wife or a good husband, I'm a good mother or a good father, and therefore God should save me, and therefore I should have confidence when I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible doesn't say that. Yeah. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. And the Bible also says that we are saved by grace, yeah. through faith, yeah. not by works. Otherwise, somebody could boast. You'd have something to boast about. You know, there are some people that believe in Jesus, and they believe they must accept Jesus plus be good, plus do things. That's wrong, too. Because it doesn't have what is good. This person knew she was a sinner and people judged her. It doesn't even say what kind of sin she committed, but she was a sinner. If he, if he knew what sort of person this was, he would know that she's a sinner. Now Jesus says to her, your faith, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This woman recognized Jesus as the Savior, as the Messiah. Amen. She recognized him. 
The woman with the issue of blood recognized Jesus as their healer. Amen. Amen. She knew he was a healer. She, she had heard, seen, I don't know, she, she, she would have been somebody, generally speaking, on the outskirts of other people. She, she was like a leper. She, she had this, she was unclean. Under the law, she would have had to tell, the, tell people, I'm unclean. In fact, if a woman had a discharge of blood, then in her household, she would have had to make sure that nobody touched her. This woman had it for 12 years. This woman knew, she said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Amen. Amen. The other woman knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus cares about both. The interesting thing, I think, as, as I was thinking about, about this woman with the issue of blood, who would have been ostracized in society because of her situation, the moment that she was healed, she was cleansed. Amen. She, that her blood dried up. She would have been able to come back to her family. She would have been able to be accepted as clean by going to the priests. She would have been able to fit back into society. She would have needed no rehabilitation, no counselling, no nothing. In one hit, just a touch was sufficient for her. Just a touch. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just a touch from Jesus is sufficient. Amen. That's what the Bible would say. Now, Jesus mixed with all people in society. It's interesting, the day that they lived in those days, women were were less important in that day than men. In countries today, it's still the same in some countries. But in Jesus' eyes, everyone was equal. See? This woman was equal to Jairus. The Bible says that Jairus came up to Jesus and he bowed down. He was on his knees before Jesus because he was begging Jesus to come with him so his daughter would be healed. This woman was on her knees before Jesus, begging Jesus. We need to hum it shows a picture here that, that every person needs to humble themselves before Jesus to receive from Jesus whatever is needed in their life. Mm -hmm. Repentance is required. This woman repented. She was crying. And the thing that Jesus gave her was peace. He said, go in peace. Go in peace. Shalom. Living in a world where there is little peace or no peace. We need to have peace with God. We need to have peace with fellow man. We need, to have peace with, we need to have peace with people. We can have peace. The Bible says that Jesus said, I'll give you peace, but not as the world gives peace. You see, you see, the world, peace in the world is the absence of conflict. And we can have peace even when there is conflict. Supernatural peace. Peace to have a total assurance, we can have a total assurance of eternity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him 
will not perish, but have everlasting or have eternal life. We can have the assurance of eternal life. Amen. Not because we're good people, but because Jesus is a good God. Amen. And Jesus has paid the penalty for sin. Amen. Yeah, because you, you know God can't just say, well, because you're a nice person, I'll save you. Because I'm a nice God, I'll save you. He couldn't, he can't do that. The Bible says the penalty for sin is death. <coughs> but the gift of God is eternal life. But the penalty for sin is death. There had to be the punishment. There had to be the, the sacrifice of death before for the forgiveness of sin. So God can't say, just because you're a nice person, and just because you ask me, I'll save you. You need to receive Jesus as Lord and Saviour. He is the Saviour of the world. He paid the penalty for our sin. Okay, there had to be a price paid for our sin. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. Faith. Do you believe? Do you trust God with your life? Are you prepared to trust your life with God with your life? Jesus says your faith. Sometimes we think faith is some mystical thing. What's faith? Faith is believing. It's trusting. This woman knew she was going to be healed. It's interesting. The passage of scripture, uh, when we read another, another aspect of the says, when Jairus spoke to Jesus, he said, um, believe. And he said, do you believe? And he said, help me in my unbelief. I'm not sure. I believe. I, I, I know you can do it. You see, the Bible tells that Jesus healed all. He didn't heal some, he healed all. Twelve years. You know, there are people around today that are, that are for long periods of time under some kind of bondage, under some sort of stuff. But a single moment, a single touch can totally set somebody free. She needed no ongoing treatment, no rehabilitation, no medicine, nothing. Who is this person? Who is this person? Who has power over nature? She just walked on water. He calmed the storm. Over health, over sin. How I say it. His name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now there is no other person, there's no other name that can happen. Mm -hmm. There's no other name by which a person can be saved. Only Jesus. There's no replicate or there's no well, we'll have Jesus, or there's this person. There's no one else. It's only Jesus. Mm -hmm. The same Jesus of the Bible is the same Jesus today. Because even though Jesus died on the cross for our sin, after three days he was resurrected back into life. 
That's the difference between every other so-called God from other religions. It's because every God from other, from other religions is still in the grave. Yeah. Muhammad is still in the grave. Buddha is still in the grave. Mm. Only Jesus is no longer in the grave. Yeah. Yeah. People are searching for peace. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then the book of Revelation talks about this place <coughs> of heaven. There's no tears, no sickness, no sin. Nothing. Everything's perfect. Jesus accepts every single person. He's no respecter of a person, the Bible says. So therefore, in the eyes of this passage of Scripture, Jerry, Jerry was a somebody. But the woman was a nobody. I don't want to be disrespectful. Jesus accepted the somebodies and the nobodies. In fact, he often ate with sinners. People look down on Jesus because he, because he realized the people that he's associating with, men and women. <clears throat> I'm not segregating between men and women. In fact, Jesus was instrumental in his time in a reputation of lifting women up when in society women were put down. But Jesus lifted them up. He said, daughter, You're saying, I welcome you into my family. I welcome you. I don't care what everyone thinks about you. I love you with passion. Not in a lustful way, but in an accepting way. God accepts all people. He's looking for those that will trust him. He's looking, it's interesting, he looked for faith. He said both of them he recognized them for their faith. A little earlier we find that there was a centurion. There's a centurion. A centurion is a military leader. And he came up to Jesus and he said, My servant is ill. And Jesus said, okay, I'll come up to you. I'll come up to your place. He says, no, 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 no. He says, he says just say but the word and my servant shall be healed. Yeah. And Jesus said, this kind of faith I haven't even seen in Israel. What does the Lord require of us? He requires faith. Faith is trusting somebody. Faith is trusting that Jesus will, that he does care, that he's interested. Jesus is interested. Do you believe Jesus is interested in you? Yes. It's really important. You need, to, you need to know, you need to know that Jesus is interested in you. <laughs> Jairus was desperate. He was on his knees before Jesus. His position meant nothing. Why? Because Jesus was the only one that could help him. In fact, the delay when this woman increased, encroached on the his journey to Jairus' house. <clears throat> and people come and say, forget about it. Your daughter's dead. He just said, she's not dead, she's only asleep. Let's go. And he only allowed three of his disciples, plus the wife, the wife mother and the husband, Jairus and his wife, to go and speak to the, to the city girl. 
And Jesus spoke to her, even though, that, even though she was dead. And she rose to life. Amen. Jesus has the power over death. Amen. He has the power over sickness. He has the power over sin. Why? Because he paid the penalty for all these things. Amen. The Bible says, by the stripes Jesus suffered, we've been made whole. So we have access to Jesus' healing today. Even though this is 2,000 years later, we have access to heal, to, to salvation today. Amen. Because Jesus paid the penalty for sin. Jesus took, took upon himself 39 lashes, beating by the stripes Jesus suffered when we made whole. We were made whole. So healing is part of the blessing of the new covenant. Amen. We're living under the new covenant. At that time, the people were still living under the old covenant. And that's why the law made her unclean. Under the new covenant, we have healing. The rules have changed. We are no longer under the law, but we're under grace. What does it mean to live under grace? Grace is receiving something that you have not earned. We can receive something from God that we haven't paid for, we haven't earned it, we haven't, we're not entitled to it by natural means. It is a gift. The Bible says the penalty for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Paul said, you were saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves, not of something that you have done, but it's something that Jesus has done. That's why Jesus, Jesus is God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God gave his only son, but the, but the son is equal to the father. Why did it have to be Jesus? Why did it have to be It had to be a perfect sacrifice. It had to be somebody who had never sinned. That's what it, there's no human being that could have paid the penalty for, uh, for sin. Because it had to be a perfect sacrifice. Under the, under the sacrifice of the old covenant, they had to sacrifice animals, but they had to be without blemish. Jesus was without blemish. He never sinned. He was tempted and tested in every way, the Bible said, but he didn't sin. He knew what it was like to be tested and to be tempted because he was tested and tempted. That's why he knows what we feel like. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the healer physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. So that's why we get back to the scripture again. It says, now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all observing him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. 
she came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Just a touch was sufficient. When they it said, Who touched me? Jesus asked. And when they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the, the people are crowding and pressing against you. In other words, how can you say someone touched you? We're, we're, we're walking in a crowd and people are crushing against you. So many people touched you. He said, but there's somebody touched him because the king is here. Okay. Yeah. The king is here. It says, somebody touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. That power is the power of the Holy Spirit. That power of the Holy Spirit is here today. Yeah. Jesus said it was important that he leaves. He told his disciples, while I'm on this earth, I can only be in one place at one time. It's important that I go. So when I go, the, that the Advocate or the Holy Spirit can come. Because the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at once. The Holy Spirit is here this morning, this, this evening. The Holy Spirit. Jesus is in heaven, but his representative is, on the, is here right now. He says... Somebody just like me is going to come. Another one like me is going to come. Another one. That's the Holy Spirit. God does everything on the earth today through the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that God does in, on the earth today except through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here today. The Holy Spirit is here. Jesus said he, he, he had the same Spirit. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me. The same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, the Bible says, dwells in us. So the Holy Spirit is here today. So we can have a confidence of healing, healing people being healed. We have the confidence of people being saved. We have the confidence of people being set free from bondages. Yes. Yeah. He defeated the power of darkness. Hallelujah. Mm. God is good. Oh, you know, you may live <clears throat> where you live right now. It might be going through a difficult time. But it takes one touch yeah. for transformation. Yeah. Maybe you've been dealing with something for a long time. You need a touch from the Holy Spirit. You need a touch from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He can transform your life. He can change you. Sometimes instantly, other times it's a process. But it's a God working through the life. At that particular, at that, at that moment of touch is the time when restoration and healing starts. This woman was instant. Okay? We know of some of our experiences where we've, had, we've been touched and it's taken time. Why? I don't know. But Jesus is the one. Are we there? Jesus is doing the work. All of us here in this room are a work in progress. We're all along the line. Are we there? None of us have got it together. God's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for people who will trust him. Broken people. People who are a mess. Jesus accepts everybody. Jesus has already included everyone here as people. We are God's sons and daughters if we receive him as our Lord and Saviour. For as many as who have been called by God, as many who have accepted God, he gave them the right to become children of God. Amen, Jesus. But we have to acknowledge him. Amen. We have to receive him. If you're here tonight, and you've never really received him, I'm not assuming anything amongst you here today. I, I, I assume nothing. Each one of us 
requires to touch Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody else can't touch Jesus for you. The woman had to touch Jesus. The woman for salvation touched Jesus. And she, she repented. She recognized that she needed a saviour. Self-righteousness will not cut it. I'm okay. I don't need anybody. I can do it myself. And we live in a society today where this, is, this type of attitude is recommended. In society today, we want, we want can-do people. God is looking for people who say, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I need you. I can't do it myself. I need you. So even this smallest <laughs> sin is enough to separate us from God. But the biggest sin is not too big to be dealt with by Jesus on the cross. Yeah. We're all equal. We are equal in this room. Women, men, people who, are, who have a high position in society and those who have no position in society, we're all equal before God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God has no respect for the people the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Today, I believe God wants to touch people. He wants to touch your life. Yes. But it doesn't matter where you are in your area of faith right now, God wants to touch you. Mm -hmm. He wants to meet with you. Whether you have a small issue or you have a large issue, makes no difference. Whether it's curable or incurable, makes no difference to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because he is the answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can we just uh, close our eyes for a moment? Father, I thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit is here with us right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for each person that's here right now. Father, I pray you hang me upon each one. I pray you touch, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would be, Lord, open to receive from each one of us a touch, that we would touch you, that we would trust you, that we would believe, Lord God, you're the other one. There's no other way. The Bible says there is through no other way only through Jesus Christ. So Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that Jesus paid the penalty for our sin. He took upon himself the beating that was required so we can have our bodies healed. That you are the only way. That you've accepted each one. That we've been accepted in the beloved. And Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, whether, whether, it's, whether we tried it and, 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 and didn't, or whether we've totally trusted you, or we've, or we've never trust, trusted you. Lord, tonight, Lord, let us, be, let us be together as people, Lord God, that will put our trust in you. And believe, Lord God, that a touch from you is sufficient. Father, I pray your hand you upon each person here right now. Right now. If you're here tonight, and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, so this is all new to me, I've never, I, I've never trusted you. But today, you want to say, I want to recognize that Jesus, the message that I've heard today, I recognize that Jesus is the only way. And you want to give your life to Christ. If you want to you recognize you need Jesus as your Savior. Because you don't know if, if something was going to happen to you tonight. You, wouldn't, you don't know for sure that you'll go to heaven. I want you to raise your hand and say, I want to trust Jesus today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah, you can put your hands down. God has seen your hand. He wants to meet you with you. I want you to pray this prayer. This is a prayer of acceptance of Jesus Christ <laughs> as Savior. When Jesus was on the earth, he said, when you pray, he said, pray to, your, to, to, your, to the Father. Our Father says, let us say right now, Father, Father. I recognize 
that I'm a sinner. <laughs> that my sin has separated me from you. But I received Jesus Christ. That he paid the penalty for my sin. That my sins were nailed to that cross. And when Jesus died, my sins went with him to the grave. But now I recognize that Jesus has resurrected. And my sin are in the grave, but he's resurrected. I accept Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. I accept Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. I want to live my life with Him. I want your Holy Spirit to guide and direct me. I want the assurance of your presence with me. Thank you that you saved me. That you care for me. That you love me. And today, and, today. And, from and from now on, I want to live my life, I want to, live my life. to serve you, to, serve you. To, obey you. to obey you, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you're here today, and you need a touch from God, I don't know what area it is in your life that you need a touch, maybe it's a healing touch, Maybe it's acceptance touch. This woman was lonely. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you feel unaccepted. She was unaccepted. But Jesus accepted her. Maybe you're struggling with an area in your life. You're under some sort of bondage. You can submit that area of your life to God. Because Jesus defeated the powers of darkness. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jesus said to, to some of his disciples, He said, Behold, I give you authority over serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. The serpents and scorpions were, 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 were a type of demon powers. Some of us are under the bondage of demon powers. That we, 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 are, we think we're in control of ourselves, but in fact, we're listening <coughs> to a lie. And, but, but that lie has been broken by Jesus Christ. Jesus defeated the enemy when he died on the cross. He was resurrected. You can, you can overcome your, your problem, your issue, if you submit it to Jesus and if you touch him. Maybe you need healing today. If you're here today and you need healing, Jesus is the healer. Touch him today, we pray that we'll touch him. Amen. And have that area of your life yes. submitted to God and allow Amen. him to heal. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Bible says that Jesus went about healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Mm -hmm. All. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm going to leave the floor open for anybody who wants to, who wants to touch on the Lord this morning. And we can pray this, uh, this evening, sorry. And we can pray for you. We can agree with you. No person can do it. Only Jesus can do it. We've got to, we've got to reach out to Jesus. And Jesus, the other advocate, the representative of Jesus is here right now through the Holy Spirit. He wants to comfort you. He wants to strengthen you. He is called the helper. He's called the comforter, he's called the counsellor, he's called the advocate. He's there on your behalf tonight. So let's, I just want to leave that, leave that open. I would, would, do you mind if we sing a, a chorus? I, I always feel a little bit bad because maybe you want to have prayer. I'll come up and pray for you. Okay. So we're, gonna, we're looking away to the Lord. We've got different people, the elders here that can pray. I can pray. But we're only a representative of the Lord. It, it is we are connected with Jesus Christ. 
we're connecting with him. The Bible says that he's the same. <coughs> if you're going through something in your life at the moment, and you need a touch from the Holy Spirit, you need a touch from God, I want you to come out and run. I'll, I'll believe he's going to touch people tonight. Uh, Father, we thank you for the mighty work, Lord, you're doing even Hallelujah, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. I just sense even right now still happening. There's a, there's a, there's a release. There's a, there's a power of the Holy Spirit at work right now in people's lives. Setting people free. Releasing. Building faith. Faith. Knowing, Lord God, we can trust you. We can trust you, Lord God. We, we can't trust anyone else for 100%, but we can trust you with our life. Lord, you're the one. Lord, we trust you. We trust, Lord God, that you have begun, who has begun a good work, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for every Lord person that's here right now. We thank you for the Lord for the work that's happening right now. Lord, if you're sending people free. Yes. Right now. Yes. As I'm speaking, Lord God, people are being sent free. Yes. Father, I thank you for this time together. Yes. Father, I pray thank you, Father, for the guide and directors. Yes. Lord, that the only of the Spirit rest with each one. Yes. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. 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 Thank you.